So the, uh, the format of this talk has is, is changed a little bit in the last five minutes. Uh, I, was, I was hoping to do a code demo with you guys and, and actually show you guys how to, how to actually fix some vulnerabilities in code. Unfortunately, my laptop is not cooperating with the uh, hardware here. So we're going to change it up a little bit. Um, I, I really welcome you guys to interrupt me at any point in time with any questions you may have. Um, I want to kind of just start off by trying to take stock of, of, of who's here. So how many people are actually developers who do security? Okay, and, and I assume the rest of you are security who do development. Or maybe you don't do development, maybe you're just security. How about developers? Uh, former developers who now are full-time security people. That's great, that's great. Probably a lot of us do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, you know, so the, let me just kind of give a brief overview. How many, well, how many people have, have used or seen or looked at ASAPI? Okay, so you guys have a, a kind of a general idea of what it is. There's a lot of documentation. There's a lot of uh, uh, blog posts about what it is and, and, you know, how cool it is and what a great project it is. Unfortunately, one of the places we're really lacking right now is practical application documentation about how to actually use it. Here I've got a vulnerable web application, and how do I plug this API in to make it not vulnerable anymore? I think that's one of the areas where we're really lacking, so that's kind of where I want to focus. Um, today is more in practical use of, of the SAPI. Um, so let me go ahead and get started here. So this is the uh, this slide, the oblig obligatory slide of who I am. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions about any of these things. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer for a company in Denver called Service Magic, um, who has a very, very young application security program. So young, in fact, that I'm the only person on it. Um, I also do, uh, as, you know, as implied by the title, I also am a senior software engineer. So I'm in the unique position where I not only get to find the bugs, I also have to fix them. So basically, I create my own work, which is a really interesting situation to be in. So when I don't want to work, I just, you know, I don't find any bugs. <laughs> in addition to that, I, as it was mentioned, I'm also one of the core developers on the ASAPI for Java project. Um, there's really three or four of us that are kind of the, the core development team for ASAPI um, for Java. And, uh, you know, there's a handful of, of really great volunteers that contribute patches, so forth and so on. Um, you know, we're always, anybody who's interested, we're always looking for more volunteers. Um, we're also looking for people to find bugs. I mean, it, it is a security library, and as such, you know, we want to make sure that we're not introducing different bugs when we try and fix other things. Um, I'm also the project owner of the JavaScript program, which is, which is a little bit interesting. It's, it's kind of a pipe dream right now. Um, you know, there's a proof of concept out there that basically um, just took the SAPI for Java and ported it to, to show that, you know, the same kind of things can be done in the JavaScript world. Um, as I said, it's kind of a pipe dream right now because, as we know, everything in JavaScript is mutable, which is where things like DOM-based XSS comes from. Um, so I'll be, I, I've been working and I'll continue working with some of the uh, browser development teams. Um, I know the guys from Mozilla are running around here. I uh, actually had a really great conversation with them last night about, about some of these things. Um, so, you know, as, as things mature and as, as browsers take a more serious focus on security, which I think is a natural evolution from where we're at today, um, you know, projects like ASAPI for JavaScript are going to become more and more important. And eventually, hopefully what happens is, you know, we write cool tools, eventually the, uh, the vendors decide that they're, so, they're such cool tools that they just build them right into the browser. Um, same idea behind the Java project where ultimately a lot of these things should be built into the Spring framework or Struts or, you know, even a lot of these things should be built into core Java. I know that uh, a couple of them actually are going into Java 7 and Jim Manico in the back here is, is the, uh, basically the project lead for the ASAPI for Java. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but the encoding framework, I believe, is going into Java 7 core? Get, get 
Which is that's that's fantastic. And like it, 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 it's hard work. Like we, we also have these two the only to be supported by the next circle specification mm -hmm. after iterating with them for for months on the topic. So it's, it's hard work to get them to change the So uh, point in case here is that, you know, there's a lot of these things that are, are very very real concerns that have kind of been ignored and so the, the goal of the ASAPI is to really get in and and solve some of these problems. So I've kind of discussed what is a SAPI. Now I want to make a very, very clear distinction here. When I talk about a SAPI, normally I'm using the OWASP SAPI as an example. But when I talk about an ASAPI, notice I don't say the ASAPI. I say an ASAPI. And NSAPI is an enterprise security API. It is where you should go as a developer or as a security professional to solve security concerns in code. Um, your developers should not have to think about, well, how do I fix this cross-site scripting book? They just know if I'm outputting on a page, this needs to be encoded for the correct context. We don't trust user supplied data, right? That's first law or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a very, very distinct separation here is that OWASP provides you with a framework. We provide you with a set of interfaces that say, this is what your SAPI should look like. And then we give you a bunch of reference impl implementations. Really, it's up to you or your development team or your architects or whoever is, whoever is doing your security design to say, this is how we solve this problem for my business. Um, you know, not everybody in the world is going to use the same mechanism for access control and authorization. It would be great if they did because then we'd only ever have to maintain one, right? But you may have clients or you may have a team that wants to use Jazz over here and then over here you've got a team that wants to use ACG, uh, which is spring security now, I think. There's no way to say, you guys have to use the same thing regardless. If you want to be secure, you got to use framework A because people are going to adapt. They're going to want to adapt their authentication and access control to whatever their business case is. So they're going to use what makes sense to, the, to them in the business case. So here is the ASAPI family on OWASP. Right here in the middle, is the community. This is really kind of the heart and soul of the ASAPI project. It's not so much about the, the libraries as it is about the community and about, um, you know, the people involved coming together to build something that really solves some of these issues. Under the community, we've got wiki pages. We've got Java docs. We've got the libraries. We've got kind of a groundwork of a specification for what the implementations of this ASAPI should look like. Um, we've got a set of core interfaces which say on, uh, on your access controller you need to have a method that, sec that securely logs a user out. This is how session management works. So we define those things. So here I, I, here I put what is an enterprise security API? It's a high level API that provides access to some common security functions as services. Now, this is important because as a developer and as somebody who does primary development, I want to access things as services. I don't want to have to think about what's happening behind the scenes when I write code. I want to say I need something to happen, I call the code, it works, I get something out. That's the idea of the API. Um, as I mentioned, it, it allows developers to focus on writing code instead of writing security controls. Um, I, I think it's been mentioned probably several times at several talks, but developers are not good at writing security controls by default. Um, developers who know security sometimes are not that great at writing security controls. I know I've made my, my fair share of faux pas. Um, primarily, this should complement 
other secure software development environments and, and secure coding conventions. So this should be part of the process. It shouldn't, it shouldn't stand in the way of the process and it shouldn't invent new process. It should just naturally fit into the flow of your software development lifecycle, whether that's agile or waterfall or extreme programming or whatever your methodology is. This should fit into, and, and that's the point of the ASAPI or, or any ASAPI, is that it should sit in that development life cycle naturally. So here, this is kind of a high level diagram that shows this is what a lot of applications look like today. You've got your application. In your application, you've got your logging framework. Java is standardly either going to be logged for J or Commons log. You've got your access control layer. Maybe you're using Jazz. Maybe you're using Spring Security. Maybe you're using the built-in Java stuff, which I don't recommend. Um, then you've got your, in your data layer, you've got encryption happening. You've got encoding happening on the UI layer. You've got validation happening throughout the entire application. All of these things are, are disparate and, and spread out throughout the entire application. The goal is to bring them all into one place. The goal is to say, anytime you need to do anything with security or a security control, you come here. There's one guy or maybe a small team of guys who wrote <coughs> the security controls for your application. They know your application, they know the security concerns, and they know how to solve the problems. So as a developer, as, a, as a, maybe a junior or mid-level developer, I can entrust with you a project that has some fairly significant security concerns because I know the security code has already been written. Everybody should be familiar with this diagram, um, or at least the one on the left. So this is a mapping, and it's, it's I'm not 100% I'm not sure how I feel about this this one-to-one -one mapping here, but basically what we've done is we've, we've kind of said, here's the OWASP top 10, and here's the components inside the ASAPI that address those components of the top 10. Um, the cross-site scripting, everybody knows, Validation is all fine and dandy. It's really about output encoding. Um, so we provide output encoding. <coughs> Injection flaws, same thing. We provide output encoding. Um, malicious file execution. We've got a whole set of utilities around file uploads and how, how those should work and building rules around what, what determines, what makes a, a file a valid upload. Uh, where can that file be stored? Where can it be read from, et cetera, et cetera. Access reference map, access controller for insecure direct object reference. These things are all fine and dandy, but you know, in, in, in my application at least, the OS top 10 is awesome. I, I think I, I like it just because I like to read it, but in practical reality, I don't think I've ever actually used the OS top 10 to say, here's my list of vulnerabilities. Here's, here's what's wrong with my application. Now I need this one-to-one -one mapping so I can go figure out how to fix it. Um, so this is a good starting point, but in practical reality, it's not very common that we can you know, review an app and have a one-to-one -one mapping that says, here's the problem, here's the fix. A, it's always a little more complex than that, and I'm sure you guys all know that. Um, kind of just run over this one real quick. So the, the OS Basapi is, is growing exponentially. Um, I just found out last night that there's now a, uh, what was it, H Haskell? So there's, there's some new new language implementation of the SAPI that just got started. But um, this is kind of the state of all the implementations, the reference implementations of the SAPI. As you can see, there's not many languages that are used daily that you can't plug this into. Um, and at least use the concepts and ideas behind it. So we've broken it down into all of our, these, these would be the, the vertical, here's the components of the ASAPI. These are all kind of the core interfaces. Um, authentication, identity, access control, those kind of all get lumped into one. Um, however, they're, they're separate as well. So you can have um, you know, one package doing your access control and then maybe you've got some type of custom authentication or identity management. Um, we've also got input validation. We've probably got one of the most versatile input validation reference implementations I've seen. I've seen it worked into other ones, such as uh, I've seen 